Hello, Internet. So on this here channel of mine, I, uh, it's mostly about how old retro video games are pretty much awesome, but nowadays there is a slight problem. Nowadays it seems like everyone owns an HD television, and sometimes it's hard to get those old systems hooked up, and also have good video and audio quality. I mean, everything nowadays is HDMI cables, but for your retro system, there's a bunch of different options to hook these things up. But for your retro systems, there are several ways to hook these things up to your television. So in part one out of a two-part video, we're going to talk about old school video game connectors. Besides HDMI, there are four different hookups that are common with varying levels of video and audio quality. There's RF, composite, S-video, and component. RF is easily the worst out of these. These cables usually are used for television and do not translate great to consoles. Alright, here we got an RF switch box. So what you do is you plug it into your TV here. Okay, that goes on the back of your TV. That goes through this box. Dang. And that plugs into your console through something like that. The thing is with RF, the signal is converted through the box and the quality is not great. Even when it comes in clear, the colors are muted and still you'll get some interference as you have audio and video going through the same cable. Now sometimes you don't have any choice as you know, the old Atari and ColecoVisions and all those old 70, er, late 70s to early 80s systems pretty much only use RF so you don't really have any choice there but if you have a choice it's probably best if you go to something like composite video also known as RCA cables these red white and yellow combo is the standard in standard definition viewing provides good audio quality as the audio is now separated into two channels left and right and it has okay video quality I mean, the video is miles ahead of RF as you actually have a clear picture, but when compared to others, it's only okay. As in, to show you RF, I have my turbo graphics here, and uh, what we do is we're gonna have it hooked up through the side at first, and also I modified it to output in a composite video and we're going to compare those two. Alright, uh, as we see here, we see that the picture isn't uh, like a huge change, but what is really important is you're getting that clear picture on the composite video. There is no interference, as you can see in some of the darker areas on the RF picture. You get all these little wavy colored lines that's because there's a little interference from the audio but since the composites puts it up you actually get stereo audio and a clear picture and that's really the important thing here yeah look at all those uh, little wavy lines there in the little spider cave as the name implies composite is a name because it takes all the video signals and mashes it into one output Unfortunately, this comes to a loss of color saturation and sharpness. So overall, a lot better than RF. You know, you have just way better. You're going to get a clear signal, which is great. But, you know, there's room for improvement. And I try to have most of my systems at minimum use composite. But when I can, I try to upgrade to S-Video, known as Separate Video or Super VHS. S-Video is a big step up in quality compared to composite cables. It's also known as separate video because it splits the luma, or the black and white, and the chroma, also the color, and has a lot sharper and more colorful image that looks way better when playing these old games. I try to have as many systems as I can at least use S-Video. This is a much better picture than composite. So here we have my... Sega Genesis, and this is my S Video Modified 32X. Look around the back here, we can see that 
it now has S video out right there and also this button in case I need to switch back to composite video it looks a lot sharper probably wondered why I modified a 32x but you know all the video goes through it and it kind of makes sense as long as this thing doesn't break oh I hope to god it doesn't break okay pay attention to how much sharper the S video image is and how much brighter some of the colors are now look at that let's pause for a second here now look how much sharper the image is look at all the little water and the little streaks in the water and in the background how much more colorful it is look at the lettering look how much more detail you can see and all the little individual pixels yeah, it's a lot better and a lot more colorful and sharper image. As we get into the levels, you'll see that just it looks a lot better. It's just much brighter and much more vivid image than the composite image, which is a little kind of muddy with the picture. Let's do one more comparison. Now look at that. Just take a look at all the little details and all the little landscapes and you'll definitely see the difference. A lot of systems that use AV cables, you know like specialized cables just for that system, you can actually buy an S-Video version of that cable. So usually that's a pretty cheap option to upgrade your video quality and most of them you can just find on Amazon or eBay they're not usually more than five or ten bucks which I think is worth the money um, only a couple systems like the 3DO actually output like directly output the back into S-Video but there is one cable that is greater than S-Video and it is known as component video yes the best of all the standard definition connections is it not only does it separate the black and white and the color, but now it separates the color into two separate channels. So I think green is your black and white, and then these two are your color channels, and two for audio. So you have all five of these plugs at the same time. Now, when you're talking about standard definition, there isn't a huge jump from component to S-Video as there was from composite to S-Video, but at the same time, there is a little bit of color bleed on the S-Video, as you can see. And, you know, the color saturation is better with the component video. But the biggest advantage the component has over S-Video is that no matter what, S-Video is always a standard definition format. All right? It's never going to be bigger than 480 by uh, 640 or 720 or whatever it is. Or, but component can actually display up to 1080p, you know, or either 1080p or 1080i. Either way, it can actually display full HD images, which S-Video can actually do. So, when you actually have uh, a system that can use component and you don't have HDMI, component will be your best bet and will give you the best picture quality. Well, that's it for part one of this video. Uh, look around for part two, where I talk about trying to get the best picture quality onto an HD TV from old standard definition formats, and ways to get around possible lack of proper connections on your TV.